And finally, Hasegawa Sensei, what is your Ikigai? Uh, my Ikigai is researching Ikigai. <laughs> okay, your, your Ikigai is researching Ikigai. Yes. That's, that sounds like a good Ikigai. That was Professor Akihiro Hasegawa of Toyo Ewa University, and this is episode one of the Ikigai podcast. Find your Ikigai at ikigaitribe.com. Hello, it's Nick Kemp here from ikigaitribe.com with the first episode of the Ikigai podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. In this episode, I interview Professor Akihiro Hasegawa from Toyo Ewa University. Hasegawa Sensei was very generous with his time. He spoke with me on several occasions before this podcast interview, and he also spent a great deal of time preparing his answers. So I do ask that you keep in mind that Hasegawa Sensei is not a fluent speaker of English, but he did have the courage to come on and talk about his topic of research and expertise, which is Ikigai. One thing I should mention and clear up regarding Ikigai is the Venn diagram you've seen floating around on the internet. That is not the Japanese concept of Ikigai. In fact, that Venn diagram was made by a English blogger who basically merged his interpretation of Ikigai with the purpose Venn diagram. So he simply replaced the word purpose at the center of that Venn diagram with Ikigai and then it went viral. Just to restate that, that is not Ikigai and the four questions of are you doing something that you love, that you're good at, that the world needs and that you can be paid for, these are not questions Japanese ask themselves when they contemplate their Ikigai. Now that we've got that cleared up, let's begin the podcast interview. Akihiro Hasegawa, you're a clinical psychologist and associate professor at Toyo Ewa University just outside of Yokohama in Kanagawa Prefecture. Currently, you practice dosa therapy, breath therapy, and hypnosis, and you teach and research clinical psychology. Thank you for coming onto the podcast, Hasegawa Sensei. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Nick. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure, and, and thank you again for your time. So, Hasegawa Sensei, let's begin with why did you choose to study and research Ikigai? From 1995 to 2000, I worked as a clinical psychologist at a psychiatrist hospital that treated patients with dementia. I see. So you were at a, hosp at a psychiatric hospital uh, treating patients with dementia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While working there, I started questioning the difference in the progression of dementia in patients. After several psychological assessments, I discovered that the patient who had a willingness to grip and slow progressing dementia. I see this. So that's very interesting. So the, the patients who had Ikigai, maybe in their hobbies or in a optimistic attitude, were able to slow their dementia progression. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yes. I see. Patient with a strong sense of Ikigai could hold of their dementia, mm -hmm. patients mm -hmm. who didn't have strong sense of Ikigai seem to be, have dementia that progressed quickly. That's a fascinating insight. Aye. Yes. This realization made me want to study the Ikigai concept in depth. From that experience, you wanted to study Ikigai in depth. Yes, and I entered the graduate school. With, with the purpose to study Ikigai? 
Yeah. I understand. So we will talk about your studies on Ikigai a little bit later, but first, how would you define or describe Ikigai? I would describe it as the feeling that one is alive here and now, and the individual awareness that drives him or her to survive. So we have the feeling that we are in the here and now and that we're alive, and we also have an, an awareness that makes us want to survive. But I guess when we think of survive, we're, we're talking about a daily living. Yes? Yes, yes. But the, the Ikigai concept also incorporates many other things. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, it's correct. Such things as reason for living, self-actualization, uh, the meaning of life and purpose in life. Yeah. And you also told me that Ikigai is about personal agency. Oh, yes, yes. It's important to feel that you have control over your life and that you have a sense that your life is moving toward, uh, forward. Forward, okay. So, yeah, we need to have a sense that we're in control and that our future is positive. Yes. The Ikigai concept, is this something only Japanese can experience? No. Anyone can experience Ikigai. Oh, that's a good thing. Yes. Yes. So let's have a look at the word Ikigai, Hasegawa Sensei. It is a compound of two words, correct? Oh, yes. The word Ikigai is used in everyday Japanese language. It's encompassed of two words, iki, which means life, and gai, which describes value or worth. I see. The key point is what we mean by life. Life. Mm -hmm. In Japan, we have jinsei, which means lifetime, and seikatsu, mm -hmm. which means everyday life. Okay. And the concept of Ikigai origins more to seikats, so the word related to finding meaning in life in your day-to-day -day living. I see. So the concept Ikigai aligns to the Japanese word of life, uh, seikatsu. So meaning it's more about your day-to-day -day living yes. rather than thinking about your life as a whole. That's and I think that's an important point. I, I think many people are confused about um, ikigai in the West, and they they see it as your life as a whole. But really, ikigai is about the day to day living we do. Yeah. Now, there are other words similar to Ikigai, aren't there, Hasegawa Sensei? Yes, there, is, there are other words that use Kai. Yari Gai, it means the body of doing. Hataraki Gai, the body of working. Asobi Gai, the body of playing. These words, yari gai, uh, hataraki gai, and asobi gai, the, they're, they're actually verbs. So, uh, yaru means to do. So, yeah. yari gai, the value of doing something. And hataraku is the verb to work. So, hataraki gai, the value of working or the value of working on something. And asobu is the verb uh, meaning play. So, so be guy, the value of playing. So, as you mentioned before, ikigai is quite a common word in Japanese. Yes. And Japanese use ikigai in everyday language. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. The, the word's not special. It's 
it's a common word, but but the meaning of the word is very special to Japanese culture. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, w- when I first contacted you, I wanted to talk to you about the way ikigai is interpreted outside of Japan. And outside of Japan, ikigai is greatly misunderstood with millions of people believing it is a framework of doing what you love, that you are good at, that the world needs, and that you can be paid for. Now, this is a westernized version of ikigai, isn't it, Hasegawa-sensei? Ah, yes, Nick. Um, That's not what ikigai means to Japanese people. Mm. So Um, when you first saw the ikigai Venn diagram, what did you think? um, I felt it was strange. Yes. And I was surprised and interested as to why the misconception went viral on the internet. Yes, why it went viral. So I, I've shown the Ikigai diagram to my, many of my Japanese friends. And yes, they're usually a bit surprised and confused. And then they're interested why, it's, why the Venn diagram is so popular when it's incorrect. Um, so the, the Ikigai Venn diagram is a total misrepresentation of Ikigai. Oh, yes, it is. For many people, many Japanese people, Ikigai isn't about work or making money. Mm, I understand. Also, many people believe Ikigai is a word and concept from Okinawa. Oh, yes. That's another misconception. Mm -hmm. Ikigai is a Japanese concept with a long history. Okay, well, let's have a look at the history. Ikigai is quite an old word. Can you talk about its origin? Um, The origin origin of the word Ikigai goes back to the Heian period from about 1,500 years ago. Mm. Gai comes from the word Kai. It yes. means shell in Japanese. Okay. Shells were deemed highly valued because the were decorated by hand by artists mm-hmm. and used in game called Kai Awase. A shell matching game. I see. So did the word guy comes from the word kai, which means shell in Japanese, yes. and that's that's an old old word, yes? Yeah, yeah. yes. Shells were deemed highly valuable because they were de- uh, decorated by artists. So they were a, a decoration, but they were also used in a game called kaiawase, a, a shell-matching game. Yes. Yes. And... Only, only the wealthy, only wealthy people could afford such shells. Yes. Yes. And so, because of that, the meaning of value in ikigai, that's how it became to mean value from these decorated shells. Decorated mm, shell. I, I. That's right. I see. That's a very interesting history for one word. Yes. Just to review, we, we have iki, which comes from the verb ikiru, yes. meaning uh, daily living, daily. and then gai from the word kai, which means shell. And as we've just explained, shells used to be very valuable because they were used as decorations and in a shell matching game. And these shells were decorated by hand, by uh, artists. Yes. Yes. Well, let's talk about your, your research. Um, you've written several papers on Ikigai. 
but probably the one you're most proud of and the one you'd like to talk about is the regional differences in ikigai in elderly people and the relationship between ikigai and family structure let's let's talk about um this, your study and your findings so i will just talk about the the purpose of your paper the the purpose of your paper was to make a comparative study of the existence of ikigai in elderly people and its relevance to their family structure in both rural areas and metropolitan areas and also the paper was a, a a basic research into the structure of ikigai in the near future by clarifying several related factors from which the concept of ikigai may be defined so this was a very focused study hi yes you were focusing on elderly people oh yeah yes what did your research reveal mm. Regarding the percentages of persons having or not having ikigai, there were no significant differences between the rural area and the metropolitan suburban area. Okay, so lo location where people lived had had really no no influence or no no difference on whether they had ikigai or not. Oh, yes. In both areas, the three factors of self-related level of health, intellectual activi activeness, and social roles were associated with having ikigai. Okay, so there were three factors, and that was health, intellectual activeness, and social roles that these people associated with having ikigai. Oh, yes. In the rural area, the family structure was strongly associated with having ikigai, but gender or generations were irrelevant. Irrelevant? Okay. So family structure was strongly associated for ikigai in the rural areas, oh. but uh, gender and generation were irrelevant. Uh, yeah, yes. So that, that highlights, I guess, uh, the importance of relation, family relationships. Uh, family relationships is important in the rural area. Especially in rural areas. Yeah. Is, is that because um, in rural areas, Japanese families live together. Live together. The next and second generation has a power, and first generation elderly people has a, a weakness or uh, a sick, and the, stru the structure changes. My wife, yeah. her, at her family home, there are three generations now. She has her, her father. Mm. And then her brother, who is Chona, oldest, uh, Chona. oldest son. Oldest, uh, yes. And then he has two children. Mm. So, yeah, three generations in, in one house. I think my wife's father's still healthy, but the Chonan has taken over the family business. Mm. So their relationship, I think, is very important because they, they work together. Mm. And they also look after each other. Yeah. Another finding mm -hmm. in the metropolitan suburban area, the hospitalization experience of men was strongly associated with Ikigai. She lost his health and then um, lost Ikigai, I think. Ah, I see. Yes. So, I guess if you if you're um, hospitalized, then you lose 
control of your life. Yes. From your study, we can say that health, intellectual activeness, and social behavior has a strong influence on one's ikigai. Yes. Hasegawa Sensei, you based your research on the findings of Miyako Kamiya. Ah, oh, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about her and her findings on Ikigai? Mm, she was a doctor and mm-hmm. um, a psychiatrist. And Psychiatrist? A psychiatrist, yes. And eventually became an author. She really was the first person to do an in-depth study on Ikigai and write about it. She published several books on Ikigai. Um, she wrote five, um, 50 years ago. Uh, um, she, she wrote a book. Yes, she wrote Ikigai ni Tsuite. Yes. That was published in 1966. Yes. But that's, that's highly uh, recognized and, and referenced, isn't it? Mm. And, and what, what did she discover? Mm, she discovered two things about Ikigai. The object of one's Ikigai and the feeling one feels about the Ikigai object. Ikigai kan. Ikigai feeling. Yeah, this is something most people won't know. Miko Kamiya, who we probably could call the, the mother of Ikigai psychology. Oh, yes. She discovered that people have an object of Ikigai. And then related to that object of Ikigai is Ikigai ka, which is the feelings, Ikigai feelings. Yes. And you used this model, didn't mm. you, as, as the foundation of your research, and you developed something called the constituent elements of Ikigai. Oh, yes. I use her model, and I use um, make a, a clear concept model. And you, you titled that the uh, constituent elements of Ikigai, and you made a graphic of this, so I will put it on, on the website. The graphic basically consists of two interlocking squares. Yes. And so one square to the left has the object of Ikigai and broken into past, present, and future. Oh, yes. So even things like memory can be our Ikigai object. Mm. Maybe happy memories. Yes. And then at the present, things like family relationships or friendships or hobbies mm. can be our ikigai. Yes. And then we can also have an object of ikigai in our future. Mm. So maybe that's our imagination or as we look forward to future events. Yes. And then related to our objects of Ikigai, you've written things under feelings of Ikigai, Ikigai Khan. Yes. Um, Things such as self-realization and a willingness to live. Mm. Um, A sense of fulfillment in everyday life. Yeah. Uh, motivation to live, mm. sense of existence, yes, and a sense of control. Yes. Mm. So as an example, maybe a, a hobby uh, could give us a sense of fulfillment in everyday life. Mm. And uh, motivation to live, maybe if, if we want to get better at our hobby, it gives us a motivation to live. Oh, yes. I think your model is a very helpful, so I will put it on the, the website. 
one thing I haven't mentioned is in, in between the two squares is the, the self agent. Mm. So that basically just means me or you or anyone mm. who, who is looking for Ikigai. Yeah. Mm. And when, when you say agent, does that relate to um, agency? Mm, agency. Self agency? Mm, Self agency, yeah, yeah. The idea we have control of our lives. Ah, yes. 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 Mm. So let's talk about um, Japanese people and how they relate to Ikigai. Um, many Japanese have stressful lives. They have long commutes to work and they work long hours and have very few holidays. How does Ikigai help them, Hasegawa Sensei? Ah, so Ikigai ga aru koto de na mai ni susunde iku te ano kizuku to iku ka futsu wa kini shite nai da ke do tsuyoi stress kancha doki ni a Ikigai, kore ga te nanto ga yatte keru te omamori mi tai na mono na desu yo ne. Okay. So having, just having a sense of Ikigai, if you, if you believe you have Ikigai or if you are aware of your Ikigai, it, it helps you continue. Yes. It helps you move forward. Move forward, yes. Even if life is stressful. Yes. I understand. So as you said, in a way it helps and protects you. Mm. Hasegawa Sensei, is Ikigai becoming more popular in Japan due to the recent popularity of it in the rest of the world? For example, are more books and articles being written about Ikigai in Japanese? Mm, no. No? No. For Japanese, Ikigai is daily words. Daily word. Right. But Ikigai is the imported from abroad. Yeah, it's, it's uh, become very popular uh, abroad. Yes. Mm. We find Ikigai is important word for every people and each person all over the world. Yes, this is true. Many people, I think, want to embrace Ikigai in their lives, but I think it's important that they understand what Ikigai really means. You are going to be doing more research on Ikigai. Uh, yes. Uh, what will you be researching? Yeah, I will do Ikigai research, including handicapped person. So you'll be researching how handicapped people can find Ikigai in their lives. Yes. And, and when does your research start? Mm, it starts next year, uh, next year spring. Good luck with your research. Oh, thank you. So finally, a few more questions, Hasegawa Sensei. Yes. What is what is your advice for people wanting to find Ikigai? Try to connect deeply with the people you care about in your relationships. I see. So Ikigai is about connecting deeply with the people you care about in your relationships. I uh, guess. And anything else? Take time to find the things in the life that give you meaning, purpose and joy in your day-to-day -day living. We should try and find meaning and purpose and, and joy or happiness in our day-to-day -day living. Yes. And finally, Hasegawa Sensei, what is your Ikigai? Uh, my Ikigai is researching Ikigai. <laughs> okay, your, your Ikigai is researching Ikigai. Yes. That's, that sounds like a good Ikigai. Yeah. That's <laughs> similar to me, I think. One of my Ikigai at the moment is uh, researching and learning about Ikigai. Oh. <laughs> and uh, that, that's why I contacted you. Ah, yes. Mm. I'm happy. I'm happy you contacted me. 
Me too. Been very kind, and you've given me a lot of time. Ah, yes. So we we have spoken several times. Yes. And I should mention that you are cited and referred to in many online articles. Mm. So if people Google your name, Akihiro Hasegawa, with Ikigai, you'll find many articles that mention your name. Yes.、Mm. So you are one of the leading researchers and experts on ikigai. Ah,、uh, yes. Ah,、uh, thank you.、Mm, no, thank you. <laughs> so,、uh, thank you very much for your time today, Hasegawa Sensei. Ah, and don't wait until next day. Thank you. Thank you. I'm talking and, with me. My pleasure, and、um, I look forward to talking to you again. Ah,、uh, yes. And thank you, Nick. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Ikigai podcast. To download Ikigai worksheets, to take the Ikigai questionnaire, or to join the Ikigai tribe, please visit ikigaitribe.com. i k i g a i t r i b e